Welcome to today's live event, everybody. Uh, to, I'm so excited to see we have students here from Albania, Brooklyn, Michigan, Georgia, Denver. That is so awesome. Um, I'm so glad you're here. Today, we're going to talk about my book, Leading the Way, Women in Power, and about some of the incredible women that uh, have contributed to our great country. and. Um, and we're going to answer some questions and uh, take a selfie, all of that. Does that sound good? All right. First thing I want to do is show you a video so you can meet my co-author, Senator Janet Howell. The idea of this book started at my kitchen table when we were talking about women in politics and how few role models there seemed to be. So Teresa came up with the idea of a book that would highlight 50 of the women role models. Once we decided on the project, we discovered there were a lot of women who over the years have been involved in politics. Victoria Woodhull, for example, uh, a lot of people don't realize she was the first woman to run for president in the United States, and it wasn't in the last 10, 15, 20, 50 years. It was in the 1870s, and it was far, far before women had um, the right to vote, but she realized that there was nothing that said that women couldn't run for president. <laughs> she impacted politics through journalism and putting together newspapers. She also helps found the NAACP. Um, she had an unbelievably complicated life, uh, but always was pushing, pushing, pushing people forward. Teresa, what do you hope girls will get out of this book? that girls will be empowered um, by learning the stories of the women who have come before them and to see that no matter your background, no matter where you come from or what you believe, they can think, no, I can do this. One of the exciting moments during the creation of this book was when Hillary Clinton agreed to write the foreword for this book. We were thrilled. And for me personally, it was so important because Hillary has been my role model. Um, we're the same age. She's always been out there fighting for what she believes in. And she's done it in so many different capacities. And for her to write forward for our book yeah. was really exciting. It's an honor and very exciting. <laughs> Thank you for showing that video. Um, today is a very special day. It's inauguration day, and that is when uh, we celebrate the peaceful transfer of power from one president to the next in America. And today is especially special because together we get to witness history happenings. We get to see the first woman and the first woman of color ever become vice president of our country. So up until now, for our history's, uh, our country's 250 years of history, only men have been in this role. And so today we get to see the first woman uh, reach this level of power. And I'd like to read some of her bio to you from our book so you can, you can get a little background into who she is and, and where she came from. Kamala Harris is a U.S. Senator from California, although we know now that she's uh, the vice president of the United States. So history is happening in real time right now. She's the first American senator in history of South Asian descent and the first black senator from California. My mother had a saying, Harris has commented, Kamala, you may be the first to do many things, but make sure you're not the last. Kamala was born in 1964 in Oakland, California. Her mother was from India and her father was from Jamaica. They were both active in the civil rights movement in the 1960s in Berkeley, California, giving Kamala a stroller eye view to, of the fight for racial equality in the United States. 
when she was a child, she got to travel regularly to Jamaica from India and India. In both places, she was further inspired by the conversations and activism of her family members abroad. After her parents divorced, she and her sister were mostly raised by their mother, who had very high expectations for her girls. They helped clean test tubes in their mother's science lab, sang in church choir, and learned to cook Indian food. When Kamala was 13 years old, she organized a protest at the building she and her family lived in because children weren't allowed to play soccer on the lawn. The protest was successful, and before long, the neighborhood kids were playing soccer in the building's green space. In 2016, she jumped into a race for the seat of the United States Senate. She won and has been considered a leader in her party since then, unafraid to speak up and take a stand for what she feels is right. In almost every position she has held, Kamala Harris has represented a first of one kind or another. Taking to heart what her mother taught her about making sure she won't be the last, she makes time to mentor women seeking public office because she believes more women are needed in all areas of government. In 2019, she declared her candidacy for the presidency of the United States. She didn't win, and we know now with the benefit of hindsight that um, she then was selected as vice president. Uh, she and Joe Biden won, and today she is officially the vice president of the United States. Um, what I love about her story is how she talks about how she was the first. And being a first is not easy. I don't know if any of you have had the chance to be the first in, to do something, but it takes a lot of courage and a lot of strength. But every single time that somebody becomes the first at something they do, they open the door for others to then rise up, to let their voices be heard, and to lead. And that's why we wrote this book, because we wanted to tell the stories of all the women in our country that have been first, that have led and have let their voices be heard, because we believe that's incredibly powerful. If girls can see it, they can believe it, and they know that they can become it. So we wanted to write a book that showed the stories of people, all different parties, not just one political party, all different parties, all different religions, all different backgrounds. It showed how these women have made a difference in our country. So we started to dig back into history. Some of the stories we had never heard before, uh, but some were ones that we grew up with, and but we learned a little bit of extra information the further we, we dug. So we start with Abigail Adams, who you can see on your screens. She was the wife of the second President of the United States, John Adams. And at that time, she couldn't vote. She couldn't um, run for office. She couldn't do much to let her voice be heard and to share her ideas. But she could write letters. And boy, did she write letters. She wrote over 2,000 letters. And many of them, most of them were to her husband, who was president. She had a lot of uh, thoughts that she wanted to share with them. And we love her because she's famous for saying, when her husband was away um, making the laws for our itty bitty baby country that was just getting started out, she said, when you're starting out, please remember the ladies. Don't forget about women in this country. Write laws that are gonna benefit us and stand up for us. And that was a powerful, powerful statement. But what we learned is as powerful as that was, what I don't remember learning when I was a kid is that her husband wrote her back and said, oh, Abigail, don't be silly. That's not an exact quote, but um, he basically kind of laughed her off. So it just goes to prove or dismissed her. It just goes to prove that it's been a long, long climb for women in this country. But every woman has, they have continued to take a stand. They've continued to make a difference little by little. Um, they've let their voices be heard and made progress in our country. So you heard about Victoria Woodhull. Uh, she realized she couldn't vote, but hey, I'm going to run for president. Now, she lost, of course. Um, I think she had about 20 votes and she actually ended up in prison on the on election day because of something that she said that people found um, objectionable. But um, still, she made progress and she was very, very brave. 
Um, then there's other women like Mary McLeod Bethune, um, who was born, her parents had been slaves and um, she was one of 16 children and she'd wake up in the morning, she'd walk to school, come back, do her chores, um, teach her brothers and sisters. Uh, she started her own school. She was threatened um, to close it down, but she never gave up. She just kept fighting for what she believed in. So little by little, we see all the progress that um, women have made. So the big one came just 100 years ago. And I think that if you're a kid, 100 years might seem like a really long time, but it was 100 years ago that women earned the right to vote. Okay, so that really wasn't that long. Before that, women couldn't, they had no say in the things that, hap that happened to them, the laws that were made that impacted their lives. They had no say. They weren't able to vote for candidates who they believed in. Um, it just wasn't allowed. And that just, it's still, it's still astounding to me. So after many, many, many years and many women um, joining in the fight to get the right to vote um, in 1920, uh, women earned the right to vote and have still been, I have to say, still fighting even after that point for all women to get the, the right to vote. It's been a struggle in our country um, for true equality. Um, but after that happened, you started to see more women running for office um, and in making a difference in our country and letting their voices be heard. So, um, you know, a lot of people ask us, what what do these women have in common? What what is one thing that they all you know had that let them make history, make a difference in the country? And what we found is there was really not just one thing, except for maybe the fact that they wanted to make a difference. Um, we learned uh, later on that many many of the women were Girl Scouts. I might have some Girl Scouts in the audience here today. Um, and uh, so many of the women that you see in politics throughout the last hundred years were involved in the in the Girl Scouts. But then we started to look at some of the qualities they had and what does leadership look like? Um, it doesn't always look like what you think it is. Um, I think women have been trying to show that leadership can look not as masculine as you think. There are different ways to lead. And we identified these eight power symbols, we call them power symbols. And each of the women in, in the book used these, these symbols here, um, some more than others, uh, to be effective leaders. And these are things that I think that all of you probably have inside of you um, and have used for different reasons and, and in different ways. Um, we have a, a, an experience when we talk to kids, lots of times we talk to kids and mothers and, uh, these are buttons that we've made like that you can pin onto your um onto your jacket or whatever and um we always invite everybody to come up and take the button that they want and um what we what we found is that the kids come up and they take the the ones that they think they have you know so a little girl come up and say i'm gonna take courage or i'm gonna take community and then the mothers came up and they would pick out things that they thought that maybe their daughters needed like i want to pick communication or i'm going to pick diligence but the point is we have all of these inside of us and some shine through um, more than others at certain times but there's something that we can all use and they're big words like integrity um, and in the book we kind of describe what what that looks like community none of these women did any of this on their own they all depended on um, people in their community people who loved them uh, resourcefulness that means using what you have at your fingertips making the most of what you have is it um is it writing letters is it sending emails is it you know raising your hand in class and one that i love that uh you see a lot um in in women leaders and i think is a very important quality is empathy and that means feeling what those around you are feeling understanding what every what people around you are feeling and taking that into account Diligence means working hard. Courage means being brave. And another one of my favorites is persistence, and that means not giving up. And then, of course, communication, and that means getting your word out there. And it can look all sorts of different ways. We have so many ways to communicate these days. Um, but over the course of our studies, we were just so incredibly inspired by the women um, that 
that we read about and we hope that you get a chance to read some of their stories. Like we said, some of them like Abigail Adams are the stories that you know we've been told in school, but then there are others that we had never heard before. And that's that's part of history is sharing the, the important stories with, about people that you might not talk about as much. Um, the first woman mayor in our country ever was actually put on the ballot as a cruel joke. Women had just received the right to vote and uh, a group of, of men who did not like that put a woman on the um, on the ballot without even telling her uh, just to show that, you know, women couldn't lead or women wouldn't vote for her. And so she did not even know she got a knock on her door and um, someone said, uh, we might, we just came to inform you that you're on the ballot. You can still remove your name. Um, you know, we're so sorry that this happened. And she said, no, keep it on there. And sure enough, uh, she won. The women uh, came out and voted for her. She won. And she was actually, you know, leading that very group of men that had uh, tried to play a joke on her and put her on the ballot. So step by step, being brave, um, everything makes a, a difference. So we didn't just want to tell those stories um, of other women. We wanted to encourage girls today to know that they can let their voices be heard. We wanted to share with all kids, boys and girls, uh, the different ways that leadership can look. Uh, so, you know, it's kind of funny to think about it, but a lot of girls throughout history and even today, um, there has been a change. They grow up listening to stories um, from history about men. That's when you study history, a lot of what you you study is, is uh, men's stories. And so we definitely don't see these stories about women as just for girls or just for women. We see them as stories for everybody because they are a part of our history and past and present, and um, they are for everybody. These are the leaders of our country and um, we all, we all can learn from them. So I wanted to, before we get to take a selfie together, which I've never done in a presentation like this, I'm excited to try this. I wanna read something from the back of the book, which takes all these incredible stories and in, 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 um, talks to you, the readers, about how you can make a difference too. So it's called How to Stand Up, Speak Out and Make a Difference, a Take Action Guide. The women in this book have accomplished some pretty amazing things. They are brave and brilliant. They are persistent and tough. They are loud. They are quiet. They are strong. They are no different from you. No two leaders in this book are alike. Some are from big cities, others from small towns. Some were born into families with a lot of money. Others were not. They come from different cultural, religious, and political backgrounds. When you read a biography, you might decide that the person you're learning about was extra special or that they must have known things that you don't. But we are here to tell you that if you want to make a difference, you've already got what it takes. All the women in this book started with a simple desire to make a difference. They took an interest in the world. They had ideas for how to change their country and how to improve life for their fellow citizens. Have you ever felt like you have something important to say? Do you have an idea for how to make something better in your community? Is there an aspect of the world that you'd like to change? Have you ever wanted to make a difference but weren't sure how? I know I've certainly felt that way. I'm sure you have too. Next to each biography in this book, you'll find highlighted some of the tactics that the women use to make a change. That's uh, the power symbols. There isn't one key to becoming a leader though. No single secret to success. Time and time again, it's the little steps that people take that add up to make a big difference. Just as Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg said, real change, enduring change, happens one step at a time. So don't be afraid to take that first step. So I just want to um, share that with you. And at the back of the book, there are all sorts of ideas for how you can take that first step, because sometimes that's the hardest. How do you do it? Sometimes it's just raising your hand. Sometimes it's sending an email. Sometimes it's writing a letter. Sometimes it's 
just you know asking a question to uh, your school principal or to you know just little little things can make a big difference and that's how it happens N none of the women in this book not kamala harris not anybody else just all of a sudden decided to become vice president and it happened little little things that they did and you can do it too and it's not always going to be easy sometimes it is going to be hard and you need to expect that um, another common thread in this book is that all of these women faced hardships uh, in one way or another and most of them at one point or another failed um, they lost an election or you know they they made a mistake but then they got back up again and they kept trying they persisted so that's another another key um, that we all make mistakes everybody all the people in this book but we keep we learn from our mistakes and it just makes us stronger so who is ready to try this this selfie together um, I'm going to answer your questions in a moment but First, I want to try to take this selfie and what we're going to do, I'm going to hold up the book um, with all of you and you can share your selfies um, on Twitter with me at Teresa A. Howell or with my friends at um, Flipgrid or at Candlewick Classroom and you can use the hashtag. Let me make sure I get it right. Hashtag Flipgrid for all. OK, and so then we we'll all be able to see each other's faces and share this experience. Um, that we've had together so i'm gonna i'm gonna pose with the book so ready set go okay how did that go <laughs> see that was a first for me so i'm excited to have done that i um, mean i can't wait to see what they all came out like so please share with me if you can um all right so let's get to your questions this is one of my favorite parts of any presentation i do is is connecting with you and trying to answer um some of your questions um let's see i have mrs lebron from the city of industry asks do you agree that women's rights are humans human rights um that is actually a, a quote from a Hillary Clinton speech that she gave um, as, as First Lady. She said, women's rights are human human rights. And um, I absolutely agree with that. I mean, we are all human, all human. Um, and I believe that once we achieve equality for all, then that's when that's when we're all free. Um, and that's we all have to look out for each other and make sure that the rights that we have are afforded to others and that not one group or, or one person is getting more um, privilege and rights um, in this world. We need to stand up for each other because we are all human um, and we all have ideas and and talents and things that we want to share with each other. Um, so yes, we will be better as humans when when we all have the same rights. Thank you for that question. Um, I have another question here. I, I um, don't see who it's uh, for, from, but it says, what was it like writing a book with another co-writer? Um, and that is a wonderful question. I think that it is a little bit unique that I wrote a book with my mother-in-law. So Janet Howell is a, a Senate, state senator in Virginia, and she is my husband's mother. And um, all I can say is that it is it was so much fun. So our idea was that we would put our our two worlds together. She as a as a politician who started out in the 90s and wished that she had a book like this because she even then felt like she was doing it kind of alone. And I who am a children's book author and who love to tell stories and and, um, and write. We put those two ideas together and we just had a lot of fun. We shared ideas. We bounced to, you know, our writing back and forth. Um, she was a wonderful advisor for for me because she's lived through uh, so much more of, of the history that we wrote about than I have um, and just getting her perspective. It was fun to share the process. I recommend um, writing with friends if you ever have a chance. Um, I see another great question here. Is this book only for girls? No, I hope I hope that nobody thinks that. Um, like I said, you know, these are the leaders. Uh, 
in uh, from our country who have who have made America what it is, who are continuing to make America what it is. And these are all of our stories. Um, it's just different ways to show show what leadership can look like, show the contributions that um, women have made, and to tell some of those stories that often get overlooked. Because a lot of times in the history books, you read about men. So this is a book to just highlight some of the amazing contributions that women have made. Um, okay. Um, here's a wonderful question from, um, let's see, Parth in third grade. How can boys help girls get more power? Um, I think it's, um, gosh, that's such a good question, you guys. Um, just listening, opening up your mind and realizing that there are, there are differing views and differ, different ways um, and, and taking into account that um, we all have uh, different perspectives and something to contribute. And so just to, just to support uh, the, the girls um, whose, whose causes you believe in and to, just to support, support them and to consider them equals. Um, that's that's another, another aspect is just to never think, oh, you know, she's different, she's a girl, or, you know, girls can't do that. Yes, they can. Girls have, you know, these same ideas and um, perspective that they want to share and their voices are just as important. And we will all be better off when we have a, a mix of, of leaders and different voices that um, we highlight. Um, okay, this, this, I do get this question. You might, you might have, uh, guessed the answer. I have so many favorites. Miss uh, Ren in fourth grade asks, who was your favorite woman to learn about? And I learned uh, so many different women um, have inspired me in this book, but I can't stop talking about Victoria Wood Woodhull, as you've probably um, guessed, because I've mentioned her twice already. But it's just amazing to me that she couldn't vote, and that she thought, well, heck, I'm going to run for president. Um, and she, the half, most of the world was against her. They did not think that was a good idea. Um, but she, she persisted. And like I said, she did not win. Um, but she made progress just by trying. And not only that, she was the first woman in our country to start her own newspaper. She was the first woman stockbroker, um, in our country. She just kept, kept, uh, breaking those glass ceilings everywhere she went. I, I would have loved to have um, met her in real life. Okay, um, I think this might be one of our last questions. Maybe I'll have time for one or two more. From Mrs. Brown and Mrs. Wilgaki's class, what made you become a writer? Um, I bet I have some aspiring writers out there and and um, some readers out there too. I, from the, as long as I can remember, was a reader. I always had a book. Um, I always have a book within arm's reach um, and I love to read and when I started uh, in second grade I started writing poetry and drawing pictures to match it. I'm not a really good artist but that so that's why I focused on the writing but um, it's just something I've always wanted to do. For me it's a feeling. Writing is a is a feeling that I feel like I love to do. It It's you know it's something that's just a part of me. Um, so I've been writing for as long as I can remember just because I love books so much and then just recently found a letter that I wrote to myself in ninth grade and I sealed it in an envelope and it said letter to my future self and I recently opened it and it was about how my dream in life was to become a writer and so it was fun to read that um, as as a writer and think to uh, my ninth grade self well good job Teresa you did it so <laughs> It's, uh, I would just say keep writing if you want to be a writer and keep reading. Just just keep doing it and um, get your ideas out there. OK, um, let me see if I can find one final question. Um, oh, I do want to say instead of a question, I want to say that we have a group of third graders here watching today that are from Santa Clara, California the home of Kamala Harris. So you must be especially excited um, for this for this today. So thank you for some these wonderful questions. I actually wish I could answer all of them and keep talking to you, um, but it is time to go. Um, 
after this presentation is over, I want to invite you all to go to uh, Flipgrid's Discovery Discovery Library online, and we're going to post a link in some of the post slides after this presentation, and you can find more materials and collections about the book um, and about some of the women in the book. Um, but mostly, I just want to thank you uh, for being here, and I really want to leave you with one final thought that's very important. Uh, to me and that's that if you're watching and I've said it I've touched on it before and you want to make a difference you are enough you can do it um and it's those little steps you know like I said just raising your hand um that make a difference you all have what it takes to make a difference and we are lucky um to have so many young people uh growing up and and watching history and sharing their voices and you guys are going to be the ones who who make history in the future so um just stick with stick with your um let your voice be heard and and be persistent and brave and you guys can do it um thank you so much for sharing your day um goodbye and enjoy this historical day bye